Hey everyone, I get a lot of questions when I do videos about uh, either my little M92 here or my RES-47 here about my paint job. So as you can see, I did a multicam paint job. A lot of people ask me how I do it, what I use, and whatnot. So uh, today I'm going to be doing a video showing you exactly how I do this process. Now, I don't actually have the footage of doing either of these. However, a friend of mine asked me to paint his rifle stock for him. So I'm going to show you how I painted that. It's the same exact method as this. Um, and I'm going to walk you through exactly how it works and all of the different items that I used. Now the principles as far as how I went about doing this, I got from a couple different sources, but uh, some of the video qualities weren't the best and some of the background music was kind of distracting, so uh, I figured I'd do my own version and use this as an opportunity to help you guys out. So I'm going to list all the items that I used and exactly the method that I used. Alright, so the method that I use for this is going to be spray paint. Um, as you can see here, it's going to be the Rust-Oleum Camouflage Sand for this first color. I basically use this as a base, so I'm going to do a couple layers of this, uh, just kind of going over the whole thing. As you can see, I've also taped off all the different places that I don't want paint to get into, so you know, inside the magazine well, down in there, uh, pretty much anywhere on the inside, anywhere where I don't want it to affect uh, where it's actually seated. Now you can also see that I'm doing all the different accessories, so like the cheek riser as well as the little knobs that uh, hold the cheek riser in place. Now the reason that I use spray paint as opposed to like Duracoat or Cerakote, I know those are popular, but the nice thing about spray paint is it's really cheap, it's really easy to use, um, and it, in my opinion I think it wears a little bit better than Duracoat or Cerakote. Uh, Duracoat and Cerakote, when it starts wearing off, has a tendency to uh, start chipping, whereas spray paint, it, it might scratch, but it's not going to start looking too, too terrible, in my opinion. So once you got a good base of that camouflage sand, you'll be able to start working in some of the other colors. So unfortunately, I actually skipped the part where I spray painted it dark brown the first time so I went ahead and showed it the second time but as you can see I've used basically little bits of uh, painters tape and then I used the dark earth brown from Rust-Oleum as well what those little tape pieces are gonna do for me is it's going to preserve that lighter tan color that camouflage sand color underneath this brown so that later when I peel off those little sections it's going to maintain that color underneath. So I'm going to do a nice solid coat of this dark brown uh, over the whole thing. Now as far as how I made those little pieces of tape, like stickers, stencils, whatever you want to call them, what I ended up doing was I took painter's tape and I uh, put it on wax paper and I basically lined top to bottom on the wax paper. After that, I went ahead and just sketched out all the different shapes that I wanted. I basically took a uh, multicam shirt that I had and um, sketched out the different designs and then put it on. So at this point I'm going to go ahead and use the forest green after putting more stickers on and I'm also going to use the nutmeg. Now unfortunately the nutmeg is the only non camouflage color so it's going to have um, a little bit more of a sheen to it but still not too bad. And at this point I'm just going to do stripes of both colors again after laying down another layer of those little stencil tape sticker things whatever you want to call them. And so I'm just going to do diagonal lines all the way across from one side to the other and then uh, basically go back and in between go ahead and put that darker green. This is going to kind of give me that little two-tone background that you can kind of see going on uh, or you'll be able to see at the end or if you saw at the beginning of the video on both of those AK-47s. So at this point you can see me layering in the dark green in between. 
Um, now, depending on what environment you're in, you might want to do more of one or more of another. You know, this is totally up to you. You don't even have to use the earthy tones in multicam. If you wanted to do multicam black, same principle applies. Uh, you just kind of want to follow the same method using whatever colors are going to be most appropriate for the environment that you find yourself in. Here in Oregon, it's predominantly going to be green, especially during, you know, fall, winter, summer, or excuse me, fall, winter, spring. So I wanted to go a little bit heavier on the green in this case than I did on my AK-47s. Um, but again, it's totally up to you exact, as far as exactly how you want to divvy that up. So after letting that, those two layers cure, uh, you know, I'm going to kind of spot fill in what I want to do. And then I'm going to transition to a lighter green and a lighter tan. And so at this point you can actually see me sticking on those little pieces of tape. Sometimes it can be a little hard to separate the tape from the, uh, the wax paper. So I'll, I'll have a knife handy to be able to kind of get in there and wedge it open if I have to. But uh, when it comes to the two-tone layers, you want to have nice big pieces. That way you get a good, um, good coverage and you have a bigger background. Uh, but again, this is totally up to you. If you want it to be a little bit more even, that's fine. This is just how I decided to do it. So I made nice big chunks as far as the stencils and uh, started laying those on over a, a good portion, probably around 50% at least, of the actual uh, stock as you can see here. Honestly, applying the... Uh, the stickers or whatever you want to call them, the tape, is probably the longest process of this whole thing between actually drawing them out and cutting them out and then actually sticking them on. This, this is probably going to take the biggest chunk of time other than waiting for the different coats to cure. However, when you're putting these on, you really want to make sure that you get it nice and uh, stuck tight otherwise your edges might be a little blurry. Now if you want the edges to be blurry there's nothing wrong with that. It's going to help kind of break it up a little bit better but uh, if, if you're not too careful you're going to start getting blotches here and there and it's not going to look good. So here you can see me using the army green and then the uh, other color of brown here from Rust-Oleum. Uh, they call it the khaki. So at this point I'm just going to do diagonal lines again going the opposite direction or perpendicular to the ones that I just did. This is going to help kind of break up the profile a little bit more. So uh, here I'm doing the green first. You can do the brown first. Again, it doesn't matter. And as far as how you actually divvy it up, you can have whatever proportions you want. Again, it's all going to relate to what final look you want. Now if you don't want to spend the time actually making the stickers yourself, I know there are a couple places out there where you can buy pre-made stencils. Uh, I believe Mont Tacticals one, I'll put a link to them below. But if you're on a budget or you want to, if you're cheap like I am, there's nothing wrong with you know making it yourself with some painter's tape and wax paper. So at this point I've let it dry, I've had it, let it cure for a while, and now I'm going to start peeling off uh, basically the layers of tape to finally see exactly how it turned out. So this is the hardest part to wait for in my opinion because as soon as I'm done I want to see exactly how it turned out. Um, so you want to be patient though otherwise you'll start damaging uh, your finish before it's even done, done curing. So I let it sit for about an hour, hour and a half before I actually start peeling these pieces of tape off. Now I also had the luxury while I was doing this for a fairly hot day so the different layers were able to dry relatively well pretty quickly. So I would usually wait uh, maybe five minutes in between each coat of the same color if I was doing multiple coats, or I would wait about 20 minutes before doing a next layer. Um, and then if I was having to paint both sides, I'd usually let one side sit for 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes before flipping it over to paint the other side. That way I'm kind of doing the whole thing all at the same time. So I'll let you watch as I continue to peel off these pieces of tape and uh, um, at the very end I also used a clear coat just to, because the guy who I was doing this for wanted a clear coat to kind of protect, protect it. But uh, went ahead and used that clear coat and it gave it a really really nice finish in my opinion.
I hope you found that video helpful. It's not that complicated of a process, but it is very time consuming. But in my opinion, it's totally worth it. Uh, you know, you can see that it, it looks fairly good and, uh, you know, it really didn't cost me too much to actually do this. So, um, and also in case you're wondering too, at least on AK-47s, there's nothing wrong with actually painting the bolt carrier itself. On my arsenal, I did that. I just had it fully disassembled for this. Another note too, you want to make sure that you tape over anything that you want to be able to see. So this rear sight I taped over, the front sight I taped over, um, as well as any lenses or anything like that. So the lens on the flashlight and both the front and rear lens of uh, of that little optic there. Um, if you do paint over it, as long as you're quick, you can usually wipe it off, um, but you definitely want to avoid getting too much on, onto anything like that. Another thing you want to watch out for, like on this TRS-25 here, um, any of the numbering for the rheostat for adjusting the brightness, you want to still be able to see those as well. So after uh, you know about a, less than a day's worth of work, um, you know I, I have these nice looking rifles. And as far as the one that I did in the video, um, I'll go ahead and throw in some pictures of how that thing turned out after the clear coat and after it was put back together. I personally think it came out pretty well. Um, and you know, like I said, uh, I think it wears pretty well. I don't know if you can even see the wear that's going on here on the hand guard and, and some of the other places where it's kind of gotten banged up. But, uh, you know, I think, I think it came out pretty well. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and throw those in the comment section below. Uh, I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say. But as always, I hope you got something out of this and I appreciate you watching.